we have lost a great man, or have we? My dear sisters and brothers in the Lord, anyone encountering Father Dato Lawrence Chua, even for the first time, and even for a short while, most likely see in him the trappings of a great leader in society. He was always prim and proper, knowledgeable and conversant. He had good insights and foresight that assured good planning for the community. This is just touching the top of the iceberg of his talents. He seemed to be cut out for great leadership. But he forwent, he gave up all the high prospect of becoming a great and successful leader in society in favor of what he had discerned to be God's call of him to be a priest. And in all his 57 years of priestly ministry, he displayed greatness. Greatness not by the standards of the world, he channeled all his God-given talents to serving in love, serving the people God put under his charge with great love. And therein lay his greatness, the greatness by Christ's standards. You want to be great? Be ready to be a servant for all. And that was Father Chua. He responded to God's call to be a servant for all. And how did Father Chua serve his people? He could be sitting here for a whole day and would not be able to touch even the base of the iceberg of all the services that he had rendered with his talents. Summarily, his services could be seen as being encapsulated in the churches he built. The church taken in two senses, in the sense of the physical building, but also in the sense of the community, the parish community that he built. And the two parishes that come to mind are, of course, Holy Trinity Church in Kenyalang and Blessed Sacrament Church in BDC. But before and in between his postings to these two parishes, he had had other appointments as well. For example, he was appointed to Syrian, then to Kota Padawan, where he served as assistant. And he was appointed to College General, a major seminary in Penang. And following that, to St. Francis Xavier Seminary, major seminary in Singapore, where he served as a formator. And he even had three-year missionary work in Sabah. In whatever capacity Father Chua was appointed to serve, his spirit of service the best of his ability was constant 
and consistent. For him, only the best was good enough for God and for his people. And that spirit of Father Chua was reflected in the quality of the physical churches, the physical buildings that he put up, as well as his demands on the community in the parish, those who had him as the rector testify to that. His demands were great. And that's because he wanted only the best of God. And he wanted to build up the family of God in whatever parish he served as a family deserving of that name and status, the family of God. Now, in order to build up the parish community as the family of God, he wanted to form them in the faith. And to this end, he put up facilities to provide the people a place where they could come together and share with one another and also be built up in their faith. And so we see flanking the Blessed Sacrament Church two blocks, two big blocks of meeting rooms and classrooms. Did he build those? For his own name? No. It was to provide facilities for the people, for the community to meet, to share their faith with one another, and also to be formed in their faith. That was his goal, formation of the community. And it was the same goal that underpinned his wholehearted support as well as commitment to the different forms of spirituality that his parishioners had an inclination to follow. The main ones are the charismatic spirituality, which eventually led to the formation of the Emmaus community, the Divine Mercy devotion, Marian devotion, especially the Rosary. But the Twelve followed his people, his parishioners, to accompany them as it took on these different forms of spirituality. My dear sisters and brothers in the Lord, we can go on talking about the achievements of Father Chua. But I sense that He's telling me, enough. Go and reflect on the readings selected for this Mass. The first reading gives us a very strong assurance. Those who are faithful will live with, that is with God, in love. This comes from the Book of Wisdom. Those who are faithful will live with God in love. Then the Gospel reading takes this assurance further and it does so the words of Jesus. And what did Jesus tell us in the Gospel that we heard a while ago? Whoever listens to my words and believes in the one who sent me as eternal life. Whoever listens to my words and believes in the one who sent me as eternal life. Jesus here is assuring his audience and therefore all of us of the reality of eternal life. Because as he goes on to say, his Father 
is the source of life. And his father has sent him to offer this life to everyone. And those who believe in him will have this life. And Jesus further clarifies, the hour will come. In fact, it is here already. And the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God. And all who, is, who hear it will live. When the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God. By these words, Jesus is assuring or asserting to all of us that death is not an end. That death is in fact a transition. Transition into eternal life in God's kingdom. Jesus further assures us that while eternal life is to be possessed fully in the kingdom of God, can be experienced here on earth already. And how do we experience it? Through obedient faith. And what does this obedient faith mean? Obedient faith is faith in Jesus as the one sent by God to offer eternal life and fidelity to Him by imitating Him and obeying the Father's will. This is obedient faith. And the second reading, which was done in Chinese, reiterates this assurance by Jesus in metaphorical terms. The second reading uses the term tent, E-E-N-T, and house. It says, the tent will be folded up and then the house of God is open. Now both these terms Tent and house refer to places of living. And therefore, they have to do with the reality of life. And here it is eternal life. Of course, the tent cannot compare with the house in many respects. The tent is not as lasting, not as comfortable, not as safe as the house. Still, it provides shelter provides a certain degree of comfort and security. And the tent refers to our life on earth. It will be folded up at death. But when it is folded up, there is an upgrading. The person then goes into the house. The tent is upgraded become a house, a house in God's kingdom, where a believer has eternal life. <clears throat> so at death, the tent will be folded up and the house built by God is open for us. And that is the upgrading that takes place at death. Again, death is not the end. It is the folding up of the tent to be upgraded to become the house of God or to enter into the house of God. That is eternal life. Death, once again, is presented as a transition to eternal life. For sure, every one of us wants to be upgraded. In order to be upgraded, we need to do what is good. That's what the first reading tells us and the gospel highlights it. We need to do what is good. And to do what is good in the light of the gospel is precisely to take on that obedient faith that Jesus is asking of his disciples. Obedient faith. Believing in Jesus as the one sent by God to offer eternal life and imitating him 
in being faithful to God's will, to the Father's will. If we have that obedient faith, then we will experience or we will have a foretaste of eternal life on earth, albeit not fully. That will make us desire for eternal life. It will deepen our hope of possessing eternal life totally fully in heaven. As believers and disciples of Jesus, we live in hope. Hope of the eternal life which Jesus promises all his disciples, which he came into the world, sent by the Father, to offer to all of us. And this faith or this hope motivates us to live in fidelity to Jesus. And therefore, in fidelity to our discipleship. We want to be faithful disciples of the Lord. And faithful discipleship translates into humble service. And this humble service is rendered in love, following the footsteps of Jesus. You want to be great? His servant all. Because the Son of Man, Jesus himself, has come not to be served, but to serve. And it is in this rendering of humble service in love that the disciple enjoys a foretaste of eternal life on earth. And he looks forward to possessing that eternal life fully in heaven. It was his faith in Jesus, it was his fidelity to God's call to be a servant of all, it was his hope of eternal life that marked Father Lawrence Chua's priestly life and pastoral ministry. If we are asked, what's the legacy that Father Chua has left for all of us? An easy tendency is to say, Holy Trinity Church, the building, Blessed Sacrament Church, the building, because these are magnificent buildings indeed. But those buildings are not the real legacy he has left for us. They are only testimonies of the real legacy that Father Chua has left for all of us. And the real legacy is his life of obedient faith. Obedient faith in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And his desire to follow Jesus to his heavenly Father in his kingdom. And Father Chua allowed himself to be led by the Spirit, to be empowered by the Spirit, just as our Blessed Mother did when she uttered her fiat. Be it done unto me according to your word. That was, I think, Father Chua's philosophy of life, principle of life, as he followed as he responded to the call of God to be his priest. That's the legacy that he has given us. It's on grounds of our own faith and our own hope, as well as for the Chua's legacy, that we are here now to pray together for his upgrading from the tent to the house of God. The house that God has built. <clears throat> Back to the question, have we lost a great man? Humanly speaking, yes, we have lost a great man. But from the point of view of faith, no, we haven't. Because our faith fills us with hope that Father Chua will hear the words of Christ 
which we proclaimed in the acclamation before the gospel. Come, you whom my Father has blessed, take for your heritage the kingdom prepared for you since the foundation of the world. Come, take for your heritage the kingdom prepared for you. Our faith and our hope give us a confidence that Mother Chua will be in God's kingdom. And so, humanly speaking, we have lost a, a brother, an uncle, a friend, and for us in the Archdiocese of Kuching, a priest. And a great brother, a great uncle, a great friend, a great priest. But we have gained an extra intercessor in heaven. He will surely join our Blessed Mother to intercede for all of us whom He has left behind on earth. So it is in this spirit, it is in this faith, that now I address Father Chua, dear Father Lawrence Chua, our wish and our prayer for you at this Mass is may the Lord Jesus whom you strove to follow so closely on earth, lead you into his kingdom. Our request of you, Father, is this. Pray for us when you enter the Lord's kingdom.